Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum number of arrows to burst balloons. Don't worry, it's not as hard as the original burst balloons problem. And they give us a pretty long story here, so I'll try to condense it for you. So the idea is we're given a bunch of balloons, but the balloons are really intervals in this problem. So I'm not even going to draw them as balloons. I'm going to draw them as intervals. Just drawing out this first example that they've given us here, one interval would look like this, starting at one. Not that that's like a big deal. Another one would go from two to eight. So from here to there and seven to 12 and 10 to 16. So just quickly drawing those something like this. The idea is that we can shoot arrows pretty much anywhere that we want to. The goal, as you can imagine, is to pop each of these balloons in the worst case, like at the bare minimum, we can accomplish that with n arrows. If we're given four balloons, of course, four arrows is going to be enough to pop those balloons. But can we do even better? I mean, they tell us here that an arrow can actually go infinite. Like if we shoot it over here, it'll actually pop both of these balloons. And then we only need one balloon for here and one balloon for here. That's a lot smarter than shooting the first arrow over here where it's actually only going to hit a single balloon. So that's the whole idea behind this problem. As you can kind of tell, this is very much an interval problem. If you've never solved an interval problem before, this one's going to be pretty challenging. So I did want to quickly take a second to mention that I've created something called Neat Code IO. You might have already heard of it. If you scroll down to the interval section over here, this actually gives you all the background you need to solve this problem. More specifically, I think it's these two problems, merge intervals and non-overlapping intervals. Actually, I think uh, not this one, probably the first two will probably be enough to understand this problem. The rule of thumb with interval problems is you almost always want to do some kind of sorting, which is some pre-processing that we're going to do on these intervals. And typically it's fine to just sort them based on the start time. And that's what we're going to do in this case. So we're going to take these points that are given to us in a random order and we're going to sort them because obviously you want to be able to identify in this case when we're talking about popping multiple balloons with a single arrow, you want to be able to identify overlapping intervals. If you want to find overlapping intervals, it makes sense to order them in such a way that they're going to be overlapping, right? That's why we do the sorting. So we're guaranteed that the intervals that we're going to go through in order are going to be sorted based on the start time. We know we're going to need to detect overlapping intervals in some case, but how can we go about solving this problem? Let's think about the high level. First, I want to kind of remind you of something else. So let's ignore this example for a second. Let's suppose we had an interval that looked like this, and then we had a second interval that looks like this. And then maybe a third one, fourth one, it doesn't really matter about the next ones. Let's look at these first two intervals for a second. All these are sorted based on start time, so that's what we're going to be focusing on. We first are going to look at the first two intervals. They are not overlapping. First of all, how do we know they're not overlapping? Well, we can compare the beginning of the second interval with the ending of the first interval, right? We know that for them to be overlapping, like these ones, for example, the start time of the second interval has to be smaller than or equal to the end time of the first interval. In this case, they are, but clearly in this case, they are not. So these two intervals are not overlapping. And my claim to you now is we can extrapolate this and say not only are these two intervals not overlapping, but this interval does not overlap with any other interval in the entire array. I guarantee you that because we sorted them based on start time. Remember, if this isn't even less than or equal to this, how is it possible that any of these are going to be? So that's good. But what exactly does this tell us so far? Like, suppose we're iterating over this array, what have we found out at this point in the context of this problem? Well, basically, we need an arrow for this interval. Like, we have to have an arrow for this interval. And that arrow is only going to be able to pop this interval. Okay, that's good to know. Now, let's go back to the original problem for a second. Let's look at these two. They clearly are overlapping. We have a method to detect that now. So they're overlapping. Now what? At this point, we know for sure, I mean, we definitely need an arrow to pop these two. And so far, we only need a single 
arrow to pop both of these intervals. That's great to know. So what are we going to do now? We're going to move to the next position. And now we're going to look at these two pairs of adjacent intervals. And what we'll find is that these guys are overlapping too. We only need one arrow to pop both of these, but that's not the most important question. Actually, the more important question is, does one arrow pop all three of these? Or maybe we need one arrow here and we need a uh, one arrow here. How can we determine that? How do we know if that's the case? By the way, just so you know, there's like a space in between here. So like this interval does not overlap with this one in case like you couldn't tell uh, visually. So how do we figure that out? You tell me, think about it for a second. Well, these two intervals are overlapping, right? We care about the section that's overlapping. Even though this one extends a bit further, we know that the section between these two that's overlapping is this from here to here. By the time that we have this overlapping section of the interval, at that point, we don't even care about what this is and this is like we're just ignoring those at this point. So now in reality, when we go to the next iteration, we already compared these two. Now, when we compare these two, we're not comparing the original intervals. We already know it only takes a single arrow to pop both of them. Now we want to know, does that same arrow also pop this one or do we need a separate arrow for this one? That's the question we're trying to answer. And clearly in this case, these two intervals are not overlapping. We definitely need a separate arrow for this one. Whether it goes here doesn't matter because one arrow popped these two intervals anyway. So that's the entire problem, believe it or not. And you can tell that there's two things that are important to this problem. One is being able to detect overlapping intervals and two is being able to merge intervals. But clearly in this case, we're not merging the entire intervals. We're only merging the overlapping section. So I'll call that like an overlapping merge. This is the entire problem. And that's why I suggested those interval problems from the neat code 150. There's one last thing when we're counting the number of arrows, what you'll find is that it's actually annoying to count starting from zero. Because if we're counting from zero, we get to the first pair of intervals. We find that they are overlapping. Okay, we'll take that to one now. Okay, so then we will increment this to two. And then if we find like these next two are overlapping, well, we keep this the same, but you kind of notice that we have to handle it differently, right? Like in this case, these intervals are overlapping. So two stayed the same. In this case, they were overlapping and it went from zero to one. I think you might be able to get around this by initializing a count to one. But the way I solved the problem is just by first assuming that we need an arrow for every single interval. So let's say initially the count is N. Every time we detect overlapping intervals, we decrement the count. So overlapping interval, decrement the count because one arrow will pop both balloons. Two birds, one stone, something like that. And next, these two are not overlapping. Therefore, this will need its own arrow. These two are overlapping. Therefore, we can just decrement this by one again. That said, the more I'm thinking about it, maybe it is just more intuitive uh, just to initialize the count to one. So you can pick whatever you prefer. Now let's code this up. But before we do, what is the time complexity of this going to be? Even though we just go through it in order in O of n time, remember we are sorting before we do that. So the actual time complexity is going to be n log n. Depending on the memory usage of the sorting algorithm, there might be some additional memory needed for that. Okay, so now let's code it up. These are the notes in case you are interested, but I'm going to get rid of them. Uh, you can probably pause the video if you wanted to see them. So first things first, let's go ahead and run points.sort. Then, like I said, I'm going to initialize the result equal to the length and just decrement it every time. But you can initialize it to one if you'd rather do that. We're going to go through the intervals and we want to compare adjacent intervals, but we also want to be able to merge intervals. So if we were to initially try to solve the problem like this, I in range from one to the length of points. And the reason I'm doing one is because I want to be able to do something like this, where we get the interval at I and we also get the interval at I minus one. I want to be able to do that. But you'll find that, OK, if we're comparing with the previous interval, in some cases, we're augmenting the previous interval with the merge. Remember, we're augmenting it. We're merging it. Technically, we could do that in place. We could modify the array if we wanted to. 
I guess we kind of already did when we sorted it, but I'd prefer not to do that. So what I'm going to do is actually just keep track of the previous interval in a separate variable like this. So points of zero is initially going to be the previous interval because we are starting at one over here. And I guess I might as well get the current interval and put it in a variable so that we don't have to keep indexing like this. Now we're going to do the comparison. We're going to check, are these guys overlapping? Is the start of the second interval, AKA the current interval. So that's going to be current at index zero. Is it less than or equal to the ending of the previous interval? If that's the case, then both of these can be killed with one arrow. So we say result minus one. We also now merge them and then store it in previous. So just like this, how do we merge it though? I guess I didn't really talk about that visually though. If you think about it, since these are in sorted order, the start time is always going to be from the current interval. It's going to be the lesser because this is always going to be greater than or equal to the start of the previous interval. So we can say the start of this is going to be current of zero. Okay. But what about the ending time? Technically we could have intervals that are sorted like this. Like let's say I have a one and a five, and then I have a two and a six. So in this case, the second interval has an end time that's greater. In another case, we you can imagine we'd have something like this, one, five, and maybe two to four. So this time the ending is smaller than this one. So if we just want the overlapping section of these two, it's gonna be from two to five. If we want the overlapping section of this, it's gonna be from two to four. So we already concluded that this is always gonna be from the second interval, but the ending could be different. And how do we know which one to pick? Well, basically we're gonna take the minimum of this and this, it happens to be five this time. We're gonna take the minimum of this and this, it happens to be four this time. So that's what we're doing here. We're gonna take minimum of current of one and minimum of previous of one. Okay, so this is the case where they are overlapping. What about the case where they're not overlapping? Well, we don't really do anything because we already assumed we need an arrow for every single interval uh, over here. I guess what we do do is update previous still. We will now set previous equal to the current interval. So this is the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. Check out Neatcode.io if you're preparing for coding interviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.